Rise and Shine, it is your daily business tech boost with me, Charlie Latham. Topic number 315 today, we're going to be talking about managing customer expectations and using email to do it. Managing customer expectations is probably the most important thing we can do. I've got to be careful saying that. It is one of the most important things we can do in delivering exceptional customer service to our clients, to our customers, to our patients, who would, however you want to label them. It is really important. When you manage a customer's expectations, it is much easier to meet their expectations than when you don't. And the reason I say that is if someone comes to you and you say, sure, not a problem, you can have that tomorrow, and tomorrow comes, and you don't have it ready, and you haven't communicated with them to say that it's not going to be ready, they're going to be annoyed. They're going to be really annoyed. And if they're not really annoyed outwardly, it's going to be bubbling inside. Now, a lot of people will say, no, no, it's okay, I get it. You know, I didn't expect to be ready today or tomorrow or whatever it is. But if you then continue to not communicate with them and not manage their expectations, it's just going to, it, 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 it stacks, right? It's like the little fizzy bottle. It's like a bottle of fizzy water. And the more you shake it and you're shaking it, the more, ups, the more it's going to explode when you take the lid off it. So managing customer ex expectations is really, really important. How can you use email to do that? Well, let's start right at the top. If someone's placed an order with you and that's an order for a product or a service, send confirmation emails, if not immediately, very quickly after the purchase to reassure your customers and provide details about their orders. Now, for me who provides service, and you know what? I talk about all of this stuff and I'm going to say I am far from perfect in all any of this, I, I have my standards and I often fail to meet those standards, but I strive to meet those standards and I work to improve my system by 1% every time so that I can start to meet those standards or I can meet those standards, not just start to, I can meet those standards. So for someone like me, I because someone will come in and say, oh, we want to take this proposal that you've given us to do a needs analysis or to do a, a, a scope of work document or to build our website or to help us transfer our email or whatever it is, I will create a help desk ticket and that will send back a confirmation saying we've got it, we're working on it, just letting you know that this is the, the placeholder where we're going to be putting all of the information so that they've got it, they know that it's there. I don't do that immediately because that comes in on my email, normally comes in on our team email and I have to manually create the help desk ticket. I could automate it. You are entirely correct. I have chosen not to for various reasons, but I do try to get that done within a few hours of that confirmation coming back or within 24 hours of that confirmation coming in to say, yes, we want to work with you. So send out your order confirmations. What they should, what should your email com order confirmation say? It depends, doesn't it? But at the very least, it needs to say, "Hey, thanks so much for purchasing from us. I really, we really appreciate your business. Here's what you've ordered. This is what we've got as a copy of your order, so that they can look at it and they go, "That's not what I ordered," or "Yeah, that's what I wanted." Uh, and we will ship this within X number of hours, X number of days, we will follow up with you within X number of hours, X number of days, and let you know what the next action is. Because sometimes you can't just ship out a product. Sometimes you've got to go and pack it. Sometimes you've got to go and get it. Sometimes you've got to go and do things. But tell them what the next action is and tell them when they can expect to hear from you next. That's what an order confirmation is about. When you ship your product, or in my case, when we start delivering the service, when we start working on the service, deliver updates. Keep your customers informed about the status of their orders with either shipping updates, tracking information if you are shipping anything, or in my case, hi, letting you know we started working on your product or on your project today. Here's where we're at. This is what we're doing. The team's engaged. We will be back to you within two or three days, whatever it is and with, with a further update. Please don't expect to hear from us because we're busy working on your product, right? We're busy working on your project, right? So I've given them when they can expect to hear from me. 
the most important thing I need to do then is make sure that when I set that that time frame, I either follow up before then, I follow up before then, on or before that time. Really, really important. Make sure your communication is clear. Use your email to clearly communicate any changes to the service, pricing, product availability, and manage your expectations effectively. So that comes back to uh, we've shipped your product or you've, we've got we've, we've ordered your product. It's we're waiting to pack it. it. It's on its way. Something's happened in the warehouse where where it's shipping from. It's going to take another day to get out. Tell people that. Yeah, they're going to be annoyed that it's going to be delayed. Well. Maybe they won't be. I tell you what, though, if they are annoyed at it being delayed a day, can you imagine how annoyed they would be if it takes three or four days longer to get to them than you told them initially? So make sure you're communicating up um, updates to changes in status, updates, all of those things. Where where are we at? What's going on? One of the best things I've ever done is gone back to people and say, hey, just saying, you know, we're still working on it. We, we don't have anything yet. As soon as we've got something, I will get back to you. This is going to take us a few days. Well, you knew it was going to take us a few days, but I'm letting you know that I haven't forgotten you. Such a, such a powerful thing to do. When you are setting time frames, make sure they are realistic, please. If you have delays or extended shipping times or you can't start on a project straight away, be realistic about when you can do it. Be realistic about when the resolution is. One of the things that I was taught as a very young service agent and salesperson was to overestimate and over deliver. Now, I don't know if I've got that around the right way, but basically, if I am told by my supplier that the delivery time is going to be two or three days, I will generally go back and say, look, it's going to be three or four days or five days. That gives me a couple of days. If something goes wrong, I've got a little bit of, of wiggle room there to, to, to deal with it. I can handle it. If it comes earlier, then the customer is going to be more pleased by coming early than it is by being late. Am I lying? No, I don't think I'm lying. I think I'm being realistic in terms of I, I've been given this, I'm going to put my my contingency and my risk management on this because I know what can go wrong and I'm just going to extend it a little. If it comes in early, fantastic. I would rather I would rather be expecting something in three or four days and have it in two or three rather than expecting it in two or three days and having it in four or five days. I hope that makes sense. So set realistic timelines. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room in there as well for, for things to go wrong. Be proactive about problem solving when problems do arise and they will arise. Be proactive about it. Anticipate potential issues. Use email to address common questions or concerns before they become problems. This comes down to being having really good record keeping uh, about your process and about things that have gone wrong. We speak about frequent acts frequently asked questions a lot of times and how you can use those. There are generally in any process a number of things that go wrong regularly enough or happen with a regular enough occurrence that you can document it and you can actually preempt questions that you're going to be getting or issues that may arise during your whole process. You can use your email to either send all of those out at once. Again, don't over information overload. We've spoken about that in other other podcasts that I've done. Don't don't information overload. Or maybe you can drip feed them out over time so that you just keep your customer updated. You're keeping the communications going with them. They can see that, you know, oh, they've thought about that. Okay, cool. That's great. So you, you be proactive in your problem solving. Try to preempt problems. Look at your process. Look at the things that occur in your process with enough regularity that you can say you can start to address that up front before it becomes a problem. 
And of course, when you receive issues, when you receive follow-ups, or even if you receive uh, feedback that says thanks so much, you know, positive feedback, follow that up with an email. Send an email back and say, thank you so much. Thanks for purchasing from us. Thank you for giving us your feedback. I, even if it's terrible feedback, I, I would prefer to thank someone for their feedback than to say, meh. I'm, not, I'm just going to ignore you <laughs> because by doing that, you're, in, you're saying to them that you're open to, to listening to what they have to say. The other thing you can do with a follow-up email is to ask for, ask for feedback. You can do a satisfaction survey. You can ask them for feedback as to the process and what, what they'd like to see done differently. What do they think could, be, could have been done better? All of those things can be done using email. And it will manage your customer expectations and help you hopefully delight your customers rather than just meet their needs. What do you guys think? I, uh, I, I'm i a big proponent of good customer service and excelling at customer service. Like I said, I am not perfect. I have my issues. I have my problems, but I I. I am a big proponent of providing good customer service and increasing my system by 1% every time so that I can meet the standards that I set for myself. What do you guys think? I would love to hear from you. Leave comments wherever you're watching or listening to these videos. You can join us on our or in our Locals community, askcharlieletham.locals.com. I would love to have you there. You can also send us a DM on our social media channels and I will respond to you. If you can, please do like this video and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you find out when we drop more content and I will see you tomorrow and we're going to be talking topic number 316, how to use email to build trust and credibility. See you all tomorrow guys, bye!